everybody, it's Miss Christina again with the Orange County Children's Therapeutic Arts Center. In this continued series of online drawing lessons, we're going to be learning how to draw each individual feature of the human face so we can wrap it all together to create our first realistic portrait drawing. So what we're going to be drawing today is the ear. So the ear can be a little bit tricky, but we'll break it down one step at a time. You'll learn how to sketch and start with the basic shapes, and then we'll start to add shading and value to make the ear look really realistic, like it's popping right out of your paper. And then we're gonna apply it to our final drawing. So get your pencil, eraser, and paper, and let's get started. All right, so just a reminder of what we're going to need today for our lesson. You're going to need a blank sheet of paper. You're going to need a regular pencil, an eraser, and a pencil sharpener. So let's get started. Remember, we start our drawings always by sketching really, really lightly. So for our drawing today, we're going to learn about how to draw ears. So ears look very different depending on whether you're looking at a person from the front or from the side, which is the side view is called a profile. So today we're going to learn how to draw ears as if you are looking at somebody from the front, so straight on. So we're going to start by looking at our whole paper and thinking about how big we want to draw our ear on our paper. So remember, we don't want to draw super tiny, but we don't want it to be so big that it goes off the paper. So I'm going to start by very lightly sketching an oval shape, a really narrow oval that takes up most of my paper. And I'm going to go around and around with my pencil until I have the shape that I like. So see how it's kind of at an angle. It's not completely straight. And it, I made it pretty big. So the ear doesn't just look like a round pancake or donut. Um, it has some different shapes and angles that are specific. And we're going to um, start to do that by drawing straight lines. So I'm going to first draw a straight line across the top of the ear. So these are adding some angles that we're going to help make the shape of the ear. And then I'm going to make a diagonal line like this. And I'm going to keep this line just how it is, but when I get towards the bottom, I'm going to make another angled line that goes like that. And I'm going to make an angled line that goes down like this also. So we're just setting up the structure of the ear so that we can build upon it later. So we're going to, um, it changes the shape just a tiny bit. So now we're going to add a few more straight lines to help us um, keep determining the structure of the ear. So we're going to add another straight line on the inside of the oval that goes like this. So this is going to be one of the thicker outer parts of the ear. And we're going to make another straight line that goes like this. So we're kind of making a triangle point. So you'll notice I made this straight line um, parallel to this line. So I tried to make this line and this line the same. See how they line up? And I tried to do the same thing with this one. So this line and this line here are parallel. So try to make them the same on yours too. And notice how the, about the thickness that I made those lines. I'm gonna make one more guiding line and it's gonna go from um, here to here. So it's a diagonal line 
that goes straight across the shape of the ear. So now it looks like we kind of have a funny, like abstract shape, but I promise we're going to turn it into a realistic ear. Now that we have the basic structure of the ear, we're going to start rounding out some of these corners and adding more specific shapes. So it starts to look a little bit more like an ear. So we're going to start doing that by first taking our eraser and we can erase these lines that we don't need or the lines that go too far off of our ear. So I'm going to um, simplify the shapes that I made. So by erasing these extra lines, it's easier to understand what's going on and what um, we're trying to do by making all these lines. And then we're going to transform them a little bit more. So I cleaned up my extra lines. Now I'm going to make a little line that goes um, straight up like this. That's going to be like the side of the head. And then all the places where I made these angles, I'm going to slightly um, curve the corners out. So we don't want our ear to be pointy, we just wanted to change the shape a little bit. So in all those places you see sharp corners, I'm going to slowly round it out. Okay. And then once again, um, if you have any extra excess lines that you don't need, you can erase them after um, we did that step. So I'm only left with lines that are useful to me. And then I'm going to make the inside of this ear um, a little more curved too. It's not such a hard angle. So I'm going to actually make a um, kind of a curved line up here that's going to connect with this straight line that we made. And then I'm going to make it curve in a little bit, but I'm not gonna follow this line all the way. So I'm gonna make this wavy line that stops right there. Then I'm going to um, draw kind of like the outer edge of the ear. So I'm going to start on this line and I'm going to make a line that follows the outside edge of the ear and it's going to stop about right there. So that's going to be like the thick outside edge of the ear. And then I'm going to make this line um, just connect, just like how I see it. I might make it a little wavy though, so it's not so straight like that. That's going to be part of the inner structure of the ear. On this bottom part, um, there are some complex lines that we need to pay close attention to. So I'm gonna make, um, I'm gonna define the earlobe a little bit. So the earlobe is like round on the bottom and I'm gonna make this slight sketch line that comes in a little bit like this and do the same thing on the other side. So it shows that there's some thickness to the earlobe um, I might have made this line a little long, so I'm going to erase a tiny bit. Um, for the inner structure of the ear, I'm going to start by making this um, kind of like wave shape. Let's see. Like that. So it's like a um, it's like a hill, a valley, and a little bit flatter hill. So I'm going to have this for the um, inner structure of the ear, and then I'm going to make one more line that starts in the middle of the ear and kind of curves like this, and then it goes straight down and connects to this hill shape that we made. So that's a lot of lines for the inside of the ear. It's starting to look pretty complex. 
Um, I'm also, oh, one more thing. I'm going to, we remember we made this long line like this and it curved and stopped right here. I'm going to follow the line on the outside and connect it to that line that we made like that. So now we have the whole structure of the ear set up and we can start adding the shading. So before I start shading, um, I'm going to erase some of these inner lines that I don't need anymore. So any remaining uh, lines that we use to find the structure of the ear, I'm going to erase now because I don't need them. Okay. So that makes it a little bit more clear. Um, and now I can start shading. So the ear is pretty complex. Let's start by shading this entire inner part of the ear right here. So remember, loosely hold your pencil with three fingers, um, kind of towards the back of the pencil. Hold it lightly and go back and forth in really even movements. And try to make it look like there's no pencil lines. You want to fill in all the white spaces in between your pencil strokes so it's really an even tone and value of gray. So we're going to shade that entire part in. And I'm going to continue shading from there along this uh, inner edge of the ear so that I have a little bit of a shadow there too that connects to this part. And then most of the interior of the ear is going to be shaded too. Um, this part on the inside is going to be the darkest. So I'm going to shade that in completely. And remember, um, shading takes a lot of layering. It's usually not something that you do just one time and then you finish unless those values are really light. If you have darker values, it takes time to build up these tones and get to those, the higher numbers on our value scale, like eight, nine, and 10. We might have to shade and blend several times in order to build up the right um, value that we're looking for. So we wanna add those significant shadows, the main shadows, and we're going to add a little bit of shading on the bottom of the earlobe too. So on this part right here, I'm going to add some shading. And um, on this side, so around that like round bulb shape that we made. And I'm going to add a tiny bit of shading on the bottom of the earlobe also. And remember right now, it doesn't really matter if you shade outside the lines. You can always use your eraser later and erase um, to get those edges sharp again. So we added some shading on the bottom. We're going to also add some shading on the top of the ear towards the side of the head. So along this side of the ear, I'm also going to add a little bit of shading that shows a shadow like this. Okay, so these are going to be um, the main places where we have shadows on our ear. Um, this one right here as well. So I'm going to add a little shadow like this, and then it's time for us to start blending. So to start blending, use your finger and you can use it either in like small circular motions or you can go back and forth across your shading in order to really blend that graphite into the paper and make it look really smooth. So I'm going to blend over all the shading that I did. 
Now that I did all that blending, it's time for me to add some areas of darker shading. So remember the interior, the inside of the ear is going to be the darkest part. So I'm going to shade over this part of the inner ear again to build up a darker value. And then I'm going to shade the inside of the ear again, since that's the area um, of the darkest value. And actually, I'm going to take a small pause and sharpen my pencil. So when you're shading, your pencil gets all really fast. Make sure you take a break to sharpen it. So what we're doing with our ear and the shading and blending is building up tones. So that's another way of saying light and dark values. A tone is just the difference between light and dark. Um, and oftentimes tone refers to color, but a word that we can learn that refers to the difference between light and dark in any artwork is chiaroscuro. So chiaroscuro is Italian for light, dark. So what that means is in art, it is the use of strong contrast between light and dark. So whenever you see an artwork that has really, really light values and tones and really dark values and tones, and everything in between. Um, it's said to have a lot of contrast, especially when there's a strong difference between light values and dark values. So we can use the word chiaroscuro to explain what we've been doing in our artwork as we're slowly building these darker tones and values. So we'll continue building these values and adding shading. So what I'm going to do now is just start to model some of these select areas and add a little more um, shadow. So I'm going to make this shadow under um, the edge of the ear a little bit darker because I want that to stand out a little more. I'm really going to try to make a smooth blend into the white of the paper. And I want, um, so this is the darkest part of the ear. Inside of that area, I want there to be certain areas that are even darker. So I'm going to shade towards the top of that dark area, even darker with my pencil, only towards the top. I'm going to kind of make it round to follow that curved shape. So, so far, this is the darkest part of my drawing. And I'm also going to add a little bit more value in this um, curve of the ear at the bottom. So the inner ear towards the bottom is also going to be really dark and shadowed. So what I'm going to do next is use my eraser and I'm going to clean up some of these edges a little bit where I might have blended outside of the lines. My paper's starting to get a little bit dirty. So I'm going to lightly use my eraser and go around some of these edges that I might have shaded a little bit too much. And if I erase too much on accident, I can just take my pencil and lightly fill in the spot that I erased. Um, but I wanna make sure that all my corners are rounded and that my paper doesn't get too smudged with gray. So I'm gonna do this on the outside of the ear and a few places on the inside of the ear too. I shaded a little bit too much here. So I'm just kind of going around and looking at my drawing, 
looking at the whole thing and seeing where I need to change um, a few certain areas. I want to erase along this edge. And if you see that you're erasing and there's a really large difference between the white of the eraser and the gray of your shading, like a line, you can blend it a little bit. You don't want like a really strong white line. Fade it out at the edges a little. So just clean up some of these um, places. Like once again, I erased a little too much, so I'm going to shade on top. And I want this edge to be cleaner with less um, shading. I want to bring a little highlight there, so I'm going to erase a little bit. Okay. So now I have my basic tones, I have my basic values. Um, there is some chiaroscuro starting to develop in the drawing as I make these highlights and get into some of these darker areas. So now I'm really just going to start fine tuning the areas that I've shaded. So I'm going to make the transition between light to dark even smoother. I'm going to make some of these areas that are dark, even darker in some places. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time um, rounding out some of these edges and making certain areas even darker with my shading. So look at your drawing, follow along, and see where you might need to add um, extra values and shading to your drawing. Now that I've finalized a lot of my shading and blending, I'm going to add a few highlights with my eraser. So I'm going to add a highlight at the t with my eraser erasing the gray at the top of the ear, just a tiny bit, and I can smooth the edges out by blending. I'm going to add a tiny highlight on this part of the inner ear. So I'm gonna erase um, kind of like a Y shape a little bit and then blend the edges so they're a little smoother. Um, if I need to erase a little more to add that highlight I will. I'm going to add a tiny highlight on the earlobe because I blended a little too much. I want to bring some of that light back. A little circle and I'm going to blend the edges. And I want to add a little highlight on this part of the ear. Um, and a little bit on the top edge of the ear right there. So I'm bringing back those light places that might have gotten um, a little covered up when we did all our shading and blending. I also erased all the way around the ear anywhere that I shaded and blended outside of my ear shape. So with that, our ear drawing is complete. So what I did um, was just make sure I took my time when I was building up these dark values. I had to shade and blend and go over, especially this whole area that's really dark, multiple, multiple times until I was happy with how much contrast I created with this area of the drawing and the rest. So remember, contrast is the difference between light and dark. Could be the difference between light and dark values. And remember, the word that we learned today to describe that is chiaroscuro. 
So I added a lot of contrast in my drawing. And with that, I think I'm ready to start drawing um, portraits since I have all the features of the face down. So if you're still working on your something that you can practice is just using your pencil, really trying to even out your shading and get those areas that transition from gray until white to be really, really smooth. That's something to really keep working on in drawing is like on our value scale, smoothly being able to use only your pencil and your fingers and to create all those different values of gray, the light grays, the medium grays, the dark grays, and the um, areas that are the darkest. So being able to smoothly transition with your pencil between all of those um, light areas. So keep uh, working and practicing on that. And our drawing is completed. Now that we've successfully learned how to draw all the different features of the face, I'm so confident that you're going to be able to tie all of these things that we learned together in order to make an amazing portrait. So remember we learned about the eyes, the nose, the mouth, and the ears. So now you have the skills to combine those things to make a really realistic drawing of you or somebody that you know. So keep practicing all your techniques and all the things that we've learned. And I can't wait to see the beautiful things that you create. So thanks for joining me today and I'll see you next time. Bye.